स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning and welcome to the lecture series introduction to interaction design. In the previous lecture we saw what type of raw data is uh, gathered from interviews, questionnaires and observations. We also saw how themes are identified and data is categorized as well as what kind of analytical frameworks uh, should be used. So, in today's lecture, we will see how designers discover requirements. So, discovering requirements focuses on exploring the problem space and define what will be developed. So, in the case of interaction design, this includes understanding the target users and their capabilities and strengths, how a new product might support users in their daily lives, users current tasks goals and the different contexts and constraints on the product's performance and etcetera. So, these for, uh, form the basis of the product requirement and the foundation of design and construction. So, one may feel that it will be difficult to distinguish between requirements, design and evaluation activities because they are so closely related. So, this confusion is specially true in an iterative development cycle like the one we use for interaction design. So, requirements, design and evaluation are all intertwined with some design taking place while requirements are being discovered and when the design is evolving through various steps. So, this is where the cycle is being redesigned. So, because the development cycles are so iterative and short, so one may confuse the purpose of the different activities, but in reality each of them have a different emphasis and a specific goal and each of them is necessary to produce a quality product. So, any for any design problem asking questions like what, how and why is very essential. So, we have to consider what is the purpose of the requirements activity and how to capture the requirements once they are discovered. So, the requirement activity sits in the first two phases of the double diamond of design. We have already discussed this in one of the previous uh, lectures. So, the two phases involve explore, exploring the problem phase to gain insights and establish a description of what will be developed. So, requirements may be discovered through certain direct activities or also indirectly through the product evaluation stage, prototyping, design or the construction phase. Uh, at the same time along with the wider uh, life cycle requirements, discovery is an iterative process. So, these iterative cycles ensure that the lessons learnt through any of these activities provides a cross learning. So, generally the requirements uh, they evolve as the stakeholders interact with the design and they learn how the uh, process of design is moving forward. Now, capturing requirements now they can be captured in several different forms for some products such as a diet monitoring app it may be appropriate to capture requirements directly through a prototype or operational product, but in case of other requirements like for example, a process of booking a cab in a new city. So, in that case a more detailed understanding of requirements behavior will be required. So, before we start the construction of the final solution. So, ideally a structured notation to investigate the product's requirement is useful in this process. So, generally in all cases capturing uh, requirements specifically is beneficial in order to make sure that key requirements are not lost through the iterations. So, 
in interactive uh, uh, products, they are used in a wide range of uh, domain and have user certain user expectations. The magnitude of the problem is important to consider. So, for example, a user may be temporarily uh, uh, disappointed if the shopping app he is using is giving incorrect information, but when it is concerned with arrival and departure timing of the train, so it would lead to a great loss to the passenger. So, it is important that we consider the level of complexity of the problems. So, this is a light hearted version of the tree story that came out in the 1970s. So, this tells us how the same project is understood by the team members in a very different manner. So, the user begins by exaggerating their need and how the project leader and the analyst and other team members, how they misinterpret this requirement. So, clearly the miscommunication that has happened has resulted in certain consequences and if the iterative user centered approach is undertaken, then different perspectives are involved which will lead to a agreement. Now, for this requirement needs to be very clearly articulated. So, one of the goals of interaction design is to produce usable products that support the way that people communicate and interact in their daily lives. So, discovering and communicating requirements helps to advance this particular goal, because defining what needs to be built supports the, devel uh, the developers and allows the users uh, to contribute to the overall process very, very effectively. So, if the product turns out to be unusable or it is inappropriate, then everyone will be disappointed beginning from the user to the design team. So, user centered design with repeated iterations and evaluations along with user involvement uh, produces better products and avoids certain miscommunication and, and problems from happening. So, requirement is a statement about an intended product that specifies what is expected to do or how it will perform. So, we have an example here that a requirement for a smartwatch step counter feature is to be accurate, but another less precise requirement may be for teenagers to find the smartwatch more attractive. So, the requirements activity would involve exploring in more detail exactly what will make this watch more attractive and appealing to the teenagers. So, one of the goals of requirements is to identify, clarify and capture the requirements of the users. So, the process of discovering requirements is iterative, allowing requirements uh, and their understanding to evolve over time. So, in addition to capturing the requirements themselves, this activity also involves specifying criteria that can be used to show in the uh, when the requirements are fulfilled. So, for example, usability and user experience criteria can be used here. So, requirements uh, come in different forms and at different levels of abstraction. So, in this example here, the requirements expressed are of uh, generic uh, requirement structure which is called an atomic structure and the diagram describes the shell and its fields. So, this shell indicates the information about the requirement of the user that needs to be identified in order to understand it. So, the shell is from a range of resources collectively called volare uh, which is a generic requirement framework. So, uh, although Volare is not specifically designed for interaction design, but it has wide applications in many different domains and has been extended to include the user experience analytics. So, in this example here, we can see that the inclusion of the fit criteria, which can be used to assess when the solution meets the requirement of the user. At the same time, we have indications like customer satisfaction, customer dissatisfaction and also the priority of this need. 
So, these will indicate the information about the requirement that needs to be identified in order to understand it better. So, user stories communicate uh, requirements between team members. Each uh, represents a unit of customer uh, visible functionalities and serves as a starting point for a conversation, which helps to extend and clarify the requirements. So, user stories may also be used to capture usability and user experience goals. Originally, uh, user stories uh, were normally written on a physical card that would uh, restrict the amount of information that could be captured for a focused uh, conversation between the stakeholders. So, a user story uh, represents a small piece of value that can be delivered during the sprint, which is a short time box of development activities. And uh, we have discussed this uh, uh, sprint, which is generally a two week long process. So, user stories are more uh, prevalent when we are using an ag agile approach for product development and user stories form the basis of planning for a sprint and uh, they are the building blocks from which the product is uh, constructed. So, once this is completed and ready for development, a story consists of a description and estimate of the time it will take to develop and an acceptance test that determines how to measure when the requirement has been completed or fulfilled. So, it is common for a user story to be decomposed uh, into smaller stories, which are often uh, called tasks. So, here in this example, we can see that the structure of a user story consists of role, behavior and benefit needs to be filled in and will change as per the need. So, there are two example here. And uh, in the first example is a story for a healthy person. So, where the role is now fitness enthusiast and the behavior is that they want to maintain their calorie intake and the benefit is that they will be able to maintain their weight. In the second example, where now on the other hand, the application provider is uh, here in the example, whose uh, uh, role is of the healthcare application provider. His behavior is that he needs the calorie values for new food items and his uh, benefit of doing this is that he can provide his clients various options and he can ensure the user trust in his application. So, generally there are two kinds of uh, requirements. So, first is the functional requirement and the other is the non-functional requirement. So, the functional requirement is one which describes what the product will do and the non-functional requirement describes the characteristics of the product or uh, also the uh, constraints that the product offers. So, for example, a functional requirement for a new remote teaching learning app might be that it will be challenging for a range of uh, user abilities. So, this uh, requirement might be broken into uh, smaller tasks. Uh, so, for example, how to join a class, how to upload the assignments on time or how to uh, take part in the quiz. So, a non-functional requirement for this same example uh, might be that it can run on a variety of platforms. So, for example, desktop, laptop, uh, tablet and a mobile phone. So, interaction design involves both uh, the functional and non-functional requirements. Now, six of the most important types of uh, requirements. So, these are functional data, environment, user, usability and user experience. So, the functional requirement capture what the product will do. So, here we have an example that a functional requirement for a robot working in a personal computer assembly plant might be that it is able to place and seal the components accurately. So, understanding the functional requirements for an interactive product is essential part of the process. So, next we have data requirement. So, 
this captures the type, size, accuracy, value, etcetera of the required data. So, all interactive products have to handle some sort of data. So, for example, if an application for buying and selling foreign currency is being developed, then the data must be up to date and accurate and it is likely to change the value of the money is likely to change many times a day. So, in the personal banking domain or where the money matters are concerned, data must be accurate and it should persist over uh, months or, or probably even years. So, the third uh, aspect which is the environmental uh, requirement, there are four uh, sub requirements here. So, physical, social, organizational and the technical. So, the physical environment we deal with uh, factors like how much lighting is there, how much noise, dust, movement is there. So, how much can we expect in the operational environment? So, will the user be required to product, uh, uh, some product will be required to wear like mask, uh, headgear, helmet. So, this will affect the choice of the interface type. So, in case the environment is crowded, then how do they react with the product? So, the uh, second aspect of environment is the social environment that here issues like the social uh, of as, uh, aspect of social design like collaborating with others, teamwork and coordination with the team. So, these become important. So, the third aspect which is the organizational environment. So, it deals with how good is the user support system. So, how easily can it be obtained and are there facilities or resources for training purposes, which will ensure how efficient or stable is the communication infrastructure and uh, other similar requirements. Lastly, we have the technical environment, where it will be need to be established. So, for example, what kind of technologies will the uh, product be compatible with and what technological limitations need to be kept in mind, uh, which are relevant for the final product design. So, next is the user characteristics, which uh, captures the key attributes of the intended user group. So, where the users abilities, skills uh, are important to consider and also depending on the product, their educational background, preferences, personal circumstances, physical or uh, mental limitations are also important to consider. So, at the same time, the user may be a beginner, an expert or may be a casual user or a frequent user. So, all these factors will affect the way in which the interaction is designed. So, for example, a beginner will require step by step guidance, but the expert may prefer a flexible interaction and maybe more control features. So, the collection of characteristics for a typical user, they form the user profile. So, any one product may have several different user profiles. Now, usability engineering is an approach in which specific measures for the usability goals uh, of the product are agreed upon, which happens early in the development process and they are used to track the progress as development of the product proceeds. So, this ensures that usability is given priority and it facilitates the progress tracking. So, this is also the case for the user experience goals. Although it is harder to identify quantifiable measures that track these qualities, an understanding of their importance is uh, needed during the requirements activity. So, uh, we have discussed usability goals and user experience goals in uh, lecture 4 earlier in detail and you may refer to that uh, lecture uh, for reference. So, we will stop here today. Uh, today we saw different kinds of requirements and how clarity and communication is important to identify different kinds of requirements, even from a simple description. We also saw some additional data gathering techniques and how they may be useful for discovering the requirements. So, for example, user stories. 
In the next lecture, we will see how creating personas and scenarios and some other techniques in user center design can be useful tools and help uh, a design team understand the users, their needs, uh, experiences, behaviors, which are very important considerations for the design, uh, final design output. So, uh, thank you and see you in the next class.